Support the Amigos podcast and keep the Amiga goodness flowing for just a dollar a month. Visit our page at patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we're going to be talking about my exploits at Amiga Ireland. Oh! And we're also going to be talking about Crazy Cars 3. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but right now, Aaron, the first thing that I need to do is tell you about the Zool mask I'm wearing right now. And you're wearing. Yes. At the Amiga Ireland after party. Uh, Erla, the founder of Amiga Ireland, him and his wife spent days and weeks cutting out these Zool masks. And they handed them out to all the participants for a big group photo. And wow. I skillfully took two after asking permission and uh, brought them back. Um, Painfully for, honest. Yeah, for you and me to wear in this opening segment. However, the time has come to uh, undone the Zool mask because I can no longer see anything. You know, in Mexico, if you were to remove your mask voluntarily, you'd be ostracized from the luchador community. Has anyone ever done that before, remove their mask voluntarily? Yes. Mm. And they were ostracized from the luchador so community. you know this from experience. Well, yeah. Not your own experience. So now when I take this off, I can no longer be a luchador. I'll never be. Or a non-ant from the nth dimension. That's true. You'll always be a luchador non-ant in my heart. Thank you. You know, Aaron, before we get into uh, the Amiga Ireland trip, yeah. um, I want to give you a quick update on Amigo Aaron's weight loss wager. All because right. you don't see the emails come in because the emails come to me. I don't want to see them. Um, they make me too in, nervous. They've come in fast and furious. Um, and uh, I want to uh, give a shout out to Simon Rose, Lobsterminator X, and Ben Granville for throwing down some pledges for your uh, the, the wager. Right now, over six hundred dollars has been pledged uh, with, uh, and that's not even counting all the incentives. Lots of people are saying, and if he keeps it off. I'm going to pledge three times the amount. Oh, geez. No so, pressure. No yeah. pressure. So, um, again, uh, if you're interested uh, in Amigo Aaron's weight loss wager, this is where he is planning to lose 100 pounds for the Children's Miracle Network uh, by Amigathon in July. You can send me an email with Amigo Aaron's weight loss wager in the subject line. The email address is amigos at amigospodcast.com. So you know you know all the addresses and everything. You're not fumbling around like an idiot like me. <laughs> I'm just here to drop the pounds. I do nothing else. I will say I will lose a hundred pounds by Megathon. By God, or I'll pay. Don't think I won't pay. I believe it. I believe it. So, Aaron, I want to tell you a little about about a trip I went on. Please. Uh, one week ago today, unbelievable. I was within the cozy environs of Athlone, Ireland. Beautiful. I left the uh, picturesque uh, airport over at Charleston. Uh, the airport with uh, one terminal and five desks. Any issue getting out of there? You know, the great thing about flying out of Charleston is that they don't care. They just put you on the plane. Yeah. You know, and uh, and so uh, there was no line. Walked straight through onto the plane. Um, flew to Philadelphia. Had a transfer in Philadelphia. I know you don't like Philadelphia, so we won't we won't dwell. I don't hate Philadelphia. Um, and then it was on to Ireland. Uh, it was a seven hour flight. Uh, That's not bad. Ninety nine percent of which I was dead knocked out asleep with Ambien. That's how that's how you do it. I will never travel again without Ambien unless I'm driving. Probably not advised. Mm, on a indeed. Trip. But, uh, but did you have any trouble waking up when you no, got there? I woke up and I was ready to rock and roll. Oh, I jolted okay. out of that airplane seat, went over to where I was supposed to catch the bus, had some local people help me with that because yeah. it was it was a new and different system. Plus, I'm just not used to bus culture, you know. And also, also dumbness. Yeah, also dumbness. Took the, the bus ride was great. I mean, it, it's it's January, but Ireland was still ultra green. You know, all the fields there were sheep in the fields. It, the video looked lovely. Yeah, yeah, it was very bucolic. And uh, and so r- arrived at the bus station, and who is there to meet me? Um, I don't know. None other than the man himself, Paul Harrington. Paul H. Paul Harrington was yes. there to take me to the hotel. Great guy. He'd rented a car for the occasion. Wow. And uh, and drove me to the hotel. That was awful nice. That was. Paul went on to become a local legend that weekend, he didn't did. he? Yeah. He won. He won the contest. There was a homebrew C64 game. You know, there was, even though, they, you know, Amiga, uh, Amiga Ireland, it's all Amiga, there were some C64s hanging around. Gotta have them. Yeah, They're yeah. like the little, the kid brother. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And he won the, I think it was called 
it's not Tower Toppler because that's the 7800 game, but it was something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, uh, Friday night uh, there were a couple couple talks that uh, I was I was happy to live stream out. Um, and uh, it was just a lot of socialization. You know, this was the most social retro gaming event I've ever been to. Uh, a lot of the the larger events, like I went to Classic Gaming Expo, it's a lot of people just kind of huddled in there. They come with friends, and they only talk to their friends. Yeah. Uh, this uh, a big Iron was held in a, a relatively small space, so you couldn't help just bumping into people. And because it was only centered around the one thing, you knew that you had something to talk to somebody else about. Yeah. Um, I ran the gambit of people, you know, we were talking before the show, uh, or before I left, about how many people would actually know what Amigos was. And it was definitely the wide variety of people that were like, hey, I love your show, blah, 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 blah. Then there was like, oh, yeah, I've heard of you guys. And then there was just the blank stare of incomprehensibility. So um, They had heard the show and had never... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys still around? Uh, right, exactly. But uh, I want to, you know, give shout-outs to all of the, the people that, uh, you know, that helped... Uh, bring me there. Um, if you if you watch the video I put up on YouTube, all the all those fine folks, but especially you know Paul, Figgy, Edvin, Pixels, and Ravi. You know those are those are our, our fine folks on the Discord. Uh, they they were they were my stalwart companions the, the whole weekend. Um, but I also talked to I talked to a Greek guy. His name was Clearkos. Mm. And he did the light wave 3D uh, talk. He I was, watched that. He actually, was a, he was a real yeah. cool guy. Met a guy from uh, called John from Ireland. Um, I uh, accidentally hit. I, I banged my head on a sign, and he said, "Careful now, John." And it sounded just like a guy from Father Ted. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" It was Dougal. It was. I, I wanted to say, "You're doing the thing. You're doing the thing," and I love it. But I, I knew that that would be weird, so I didn't. <laughs> I didn't do it. Um, but. Uh, it was it was a fantastic week, and we went to the castle. There's a castle in Athlone. We we summited the castle. I love it. Yeah, uh, we we looked abroad. Um, we went to a couple great pubs. Uh, we heard some we heard some traditional Irish music. I heard it. It was um, the video. It was great. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. So it was a, it was a fantastic fantastic experience. If you're at all interested, check out my video that I posted on YouTube, uh, where I sort of give a rundown of everything that we did. But I'll also be continuing to release uh, talks, presentations, and interviews that I did during Amiga Ireland, including one with the founder, Erla. Uh, I would not uh, uh, try to pronounce his last name because I don't want to mess it up, but I know that Erla is his first name, and uh, it's like Ride, or Rida. Anyway. Well, um, you should have tried. Yeah, You're right. Tried. Um, I talked to Ravi, you know, from the Retro Hour. Um, and so uh, one of my biggest regrets, however, was that I spent half an hour talking to Mike, the uh, head uh, designer of uh, Amiga Forever. You, that's a regret? <laughs> you said, what, what about... What saying about Amiga Forever? No, you said, one of my biggest regrets is I could talk to Dan for a half hour. Would, would you like to tell me the... Re- I'd like to tell the rest of the story. Oh, I'm sorry. It just struck me as funny. So the reason why I regret it is because uh, after a half an hour, I, I hit the stop button. I tell him goodbye. I go back to review it. No audio. That is a bummer. No audio. Well, maybe we can maybe we can talk to him. He's yeah. A, we like those guys over there. Yeah, yeah. It was it was. But you know, I just want to thank everybody for being so nice to me. I'm just this this hillbilly from West Virginia, and you're you welcome me with open arms. I, I hope to return one day with you in tow. Uh, the the amigos will will take Amiga Ireland at some point in the future. So. Yep. It looked like a lot of fun. I'll ask you a couple questions okay. before we close out. Number one, now this, I'm just going to ask this because I watched the video. There's a video of you riding the bus. You're going across the plains. Mm-hmm. Was the grass and the plains and the hillside really, really green, or was that just my mind playing? It looked super. It was super It looked like a whole different color of green, it and we see a lot of green here. Yeah, yeah. It was super green, and I was surprised because it's January, but there was no, like, it, it, it seemed very lush. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It looked incredibly lush. Yeah. And and you say they uh, you had a uh, hundred plus people at this mm-hmm. in any in any given moment in this room, uh, and uh, to me it looked like everyone had a good time and and we're having a lot of fun. It was very it was very uh, it it was very gratifying and it made me it got me fired up. I have to say for some more Amiga action. So well, I'll was, tell you, it, it definitely inspired me to investigate uh, the, the Amiga hardware more when I saw all those machines being yes. set up. Yes, And I saw just, you know, how cool it was to be able to run stuff off original hardware. Um, you know, you brought the 600 back over tonight. So I'm going to be He's hooking, back in, uh, folks. I'm going to be hooking that bad He's boy up. He's back in. And uh, as soon as my PAL monitor arrives, which I've also purchased, <laughs> so I've kind of got off the deep end this week in terms of... You made of, the right call yeah. there. 
But um, but yeah, and of course, um, uh, the I couldn't go to Ireland without bringing you a couple couple trinkets. By oh, okay, okay, man. So yeah. The first one is an official Amiga Ireland. Oh shirt. man, look at that! Look at that! I can even wear that for now. Hopefully, I'll grow out of it the wrong way. Look at that! Oh, look, it's got something on the back here too. Thank you, guys. Thank you, boat. Yeah. So isn't that nice? Uh, and I love it. Uh, as you might or might not know, uh, the one and only Chris Folds provided us with uh, booze money since he couldn't make it. So I bought I bought a couple rounds for the boys, mm -hmm. but I had a little money left over. Mm -hmm. So I thought, how about a little something for old A? Oh, okay, yeah. So I, I drink up booze. A nice uh, Irish cream. Oh yes, tremendous! Yeah. I love that stuff. And you like Irish cream? I do, oh, I do, good. I do. Well, I will pour you some. Oh. All right, man. Thank you. So this is Ryan. You mean you Irish brought this cream. all the way from Ireland? I, I bought it at Smoker Friendly in Taste Valley. <laughs> Bam! Illusion blown. <laughs> Still, but it's imported. I never turned down free booze. Imported Irish whiskey is in here. It says right there on the. It smells label. good too. So, yeah. This also this stuff's a great mixer. Oh yeah. You ever make rattlesnakes oh, yeah. or anything with no, these? No, what's a rattlesnake? It's a layered drink that has a uh, uh, chocolate liqueur and Kahlua, some other stuff in mm -hmm. it. Very tasty. Mm. That's the most sugar I've had in a week, right there. <laughs> yeah. Woo! You don't, you don't have too many of these, or the man, that's that whatever. is super tasty, man. You got to keep that away from me. Don't <laughs> let me take that home. Um. Oh, and my other, uh, my other regret that uh, they're talking about in the chat right now. I really wanted to get an authentic uh, UK style kebab. It's just, yeah. You know, it's just yeah. Yeah. Kebab. Yeah. Yeah. I remember y'all talking about that. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we drank so much booze, so much beer, that my stomach was just eternally full all the time. Yeah, and I couldn't, I couldn't pack it in. How was the uh, local, the local brew there? Well, you know, it's Guinness. Yeah, and Guinness in Ireland tastes better. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, they use a different, different tequila water. in Mexico is exact yeah, same thing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, boy, it, it was so good. And watching the guys pour the pints, it's not like here where you have your slub pouring. Them. These guys knew what they were doing. You know, they were pouring some out, adding some in, setting it over to wait for a little bit, pouring some more in. I mean, these guys were awesome. You just ostracized the entire bartending community here <laughs> in Hurricane with that statement. I am not affiliated with Boat, everyone That's else. That's true. I love my local bartenders. <laughs> I was going to say, the, you, uh, the coal miner in, what was that place you went to see the, uh, the midget? The, guess wrestling? what? The midgets were back this week. Wednesday night, I couldn't go. Ah. They were back at the coal miners' lounge. Yeah, mm. I want to go with you next time. All right, keep me in the loop. I don't know if you'd make it in there, boat. That's probably you're too pretty that's for the coal pretty, miners' lounge. <laughs> All right, so um, let's move on, Aaron. Uh, what's new this week in? Ging, ging, ging. Junga, 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 junga. The gamble train's rolling in. It's time for this week's Amiga news. All right, Amiga news time. Straight up. So. Uh, we're going to skip the R stuff, which we contributed a bunch, and we'll skip your little interviews. We'll come back and you can talk about those. So um, let's talk about this one came, popped up on uh, Indie Retro News, everyone's favorite. Mm -hmm. Remember a while back, there was a game that popped out, a homebrew game called Elfie the Unicorn. I do not remember that. At I all. do. Okay. Because I remember thinking, what an what an amusing little uh, name. Is this it like is. Elf Bowling? No. No. Do you know they in Washington State just this very day they have I think it was Washington State they outlawed Elf Bowling. No, they have outlawed dwarf tossing. Mm. I couldn't believe that. It's a real shame. Have you ever it's seen dwarf tradition. tossing? No. They put on the and listen. I got all Isn't the. Isn't that sort of like what goes on at the coal miners' lounge? It is. I've got all the respect in the in the world for it. the diminutive people, whatever you want to call them. In wrestling, they've always been midgets, but you know they're you know whatever you call them. But in there was this weird tradition in the seventies, and it probably dates back called dwarf tossing. Mm -hmm. the, uh, a small person would put on a suit with handles on it. Mm -hmm. And these, pe these big thugs would come up and they'd toss these oh, guys. Okay. Sort of like an airplane it, spin. And it, no, I mean, just grab by the handles and just go oh, okay. and whip them. And, it, and there would be mats. You, you wouldn't just throw these guys into a wall or off a cliff. Mm -hmm. And they'd land and you'd, and you'd measure the distance. That was dwarf tossing. Uh, and there was also dwarf bowling as well. So that's pretty obvious. Same thing. Well, uh, and, and it's not like we, they went out and kidnapped dwarves and then threw them. These were, they capitulated and they were, they were involved and they were, they were part of they the sport. Were, yeah, right, right. Well, it's been outlawed and I think it was Washington State today, ban, I, which I, I never thought it would take an act to ban it. That's true. So now I guess all the dwarf tossing done there will be underground. Oh, it's a real How thing. do we get on this 
I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Elfie. That's what it was. Oh. Elfie the Unicorn. So what, 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 I still don't understand how you made that connection between Elfie the Unicorn. You said something about Johnson. dwarves that got me going. Something about elf bowling. Well, I'm just saying. So um, anyway, they have re retrofitted this game with a kid mode. Mm. Make it easier. So oh, I will need that. Free game. For the kids, it looks like a kid's game, doesn't it? It's mm -hmm. all colorful with the unicorns and it's a cute little, little game. So go check that out whenever, whenever you get a chance. Next on the docket uh, boat, uh, we all know uh, uh, that every month or two, we get one of these beer multiplaying compilations. And here's another one. Uh, this one is uh, like based on like uh, sort of like board games and stuff. The more intellectual version. This is a... Uh, uh, this is strategy RPGs. It's Iraq. Enough Eros, said. Yeah. Uh, I looked over the list of what's in here just to just to go over a couple things. Both the Archons, love them. You know, I love those. Dino Blasters in here, which we covered. History Lines in here, we covered that. Lemmings North and South Settlers. So Star Control. There's a lot of good stuff in here. So Worms. So if you are uh, have a CD32 and you're living in, you are living in the glorious time for the 32. You should go grab this immediately. Is this, uh, now, this is Iraq. This is not Amiga J, right? This is not Amiga J. Do you think this they is... fight? Do you think I think they're probably buddies. Mm, probably so. There's not room for fighting. Do you think, why would they fight? Do. You know, who's got the better compilation that's well, coming out this I don't month? know about that. So, <coughs> um, I thought this was interesting. And this is our good pals over to Guru Meditation. They did a live D-Paint demo. Gutsy. Ooh. Gutsy to do it. You know, I've got a, uh, a little bit of trivia for our, from our friend uh, Amiga Bill. Did you know that he was the uh, cinematographer on the new Netflix Ted Bundy uh, documentary that's no. just come out? No, I didn't know that. So I don't know if uh, if you or Teresa are into the true crime scene. She, uh, I dip my toe in that pool of case. I mean, it's kind of depressing, so it I don't is. watch it that it much. Is. Yeah. But anyway, and Ted I, Bundy, particularly yeah, nasty yeah. fellow. Anyway, back to the story. Yeah. Guru Meditation, what are they doing? Live D-Paint demo. Live D-Paint demo. Now, uh, one of the things that you ha uh, either have put up or will be putting up is the, well, I guess so, will be is the uh, light wave. We were talking about that demo. I don't know if that's part of your uh, what you're well, going to put up. my together. favorite part was when I uh, interviewed Pixel Vixen, a uh, renowned uh, artist, and I said, so you're you're in digital paint, right? And, and I, I can't even think of the correct name of the program. So uh -huh. that shows you how much That's I okay, like Boat. Listen, you ran the trivia contest. Yeah. If you'd asked me five years ago, if you were, <laughs> I, would, I would have laughed heartily. So listen, you know this is going to be good. It's got the guy that is the cinematographer for Netflix doing it. Mm -hmm. Enough said. Yeah, yeah. What are we cinematographer for? Own movies? <laughs> I don't even know if we'd go that far. You know, so enough said. Uh, now, most of the rest, and uh, we should talk about Dreamcatcher. I, Dreamcatcher released a new article, uh, which I don't have the uh, title to yet because uh, we didn't have any internet today mm. when I saw it pop. So uh, check over it. You want to have a look real yeah, quick and see what it is? EverythingAmiga.com. They're always gold. Always gold. Bide to the bone. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> any, what is this about? Let's have a look here. Storm Lord. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I haven't read it. I will, definitely. Now, Storm Lord looks like a, a movie tie-in. Is this a... Uh, no, I don't know. Okay. I haven't read the article. So, you're not familiar with a film called Storm Lord? I'm not, no. Okay. okay. I don't know. But uh, go check this out. This ga this actually has... Uh, this game has a lot of uh, fans. Mm. Uh, so, you know, and you can tell. There's a lot of mostly naked fairies in true, it. True, true. That's, that's, that's how you lure them in. That's how I, that, that gets me on board right there. I'm definitely going to read that article. So let's talk about some of the stuff that we uh, stuck up this week, and we'll come. We'll do your uh, Ireland stuff here at the very end. Um, so uh, I have uh, both yelled at me, and luckily I found uh, more Amigathon footage <laughs> on a stored on a remote drive in a remote part of my room, and so we have put up hour twelve of Amigathon 2018. Uh, this hour includes Super Frog. Uh, Gods yes. and killer bees, yeah. and also there's a hilarious uh, opening segment. So I didn't film a host segment, so <laughs> uh, you will, you may not find it hilarious. Um, moving along, uh, today's game was played uh, several times this week on the channel, and this one, I guess, did you say Duncan did this yeah, one? Duncan style. Duncan played hard. the heck out of this yeah. game and. and Stuck it up on the uh, on the net there, and I think that you also had a go at it, didn't you, Bo? Yeah, so I, I streamed it live. Yeah. for about an hour, and yeah, so uh, it was a fun time. So there are a couple ways if you want to see 
uh, this week's game getting uh, getting played out, you can go check it out. Um, let's talk about ARG Presents. Uh, this week, uh, me and the Brent, and thanks to the Brent for filling in last week for both. Absolutely. Best he could. He did a he great did his job. Best. He did He ham and egged it. Let's, 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 mm-hmm. let's call a spade a spade. Uh, but uh, uh, this week, uh, it was an interesting episode because we did games really close to our hearts. We did uh, MMOs. Uh, Brent uh, did uh, Star Wars Galaxies, and I did City of Heroes. Uh, two MMOs we played. Uh, these are the first two games we've ever played on the show that you can't just go out and play, unfortunately. You have to just kind of watch us play them. Uh, man, this coming week's show is going to be a real humdinger. I mean, if you want to see a train wreck, <laughs> this may be the show for you as me and Brent tackle a machine we didn't know exist and we can't pronounce the name of. <laughs> it's the Sam Coupe. The Sam Coop. The Sam Cope. I don't know. I guarantee it's not the third. I hope it's the coupe. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Coupe? Who knows? And I, I tried to figure out what that means. No one's for sure. It's a two-door sedan. I t- <laughs> no, they, that <laughs> could, that's a theory. That, yeah. that was that, But I mean, who knows? We're doing the Sam Coupe, y'all. It's a shame that they didn't give it a good name, like the FM Towns Martin. Hey, listen. What do you... <laughs> oh, how dare you? Um... Let me see if there's anything else that we put up. So, Bo, why don't you, you want to run over something? I just, I could talk about it and you can just take it from where I say it. So, um, we've got uh, Boat, the Boat of Car Trivia Challenge Yeah, here. I'll just go ahead and take over. From yeah, go I ahead. On the screen. So, uh, just a couple of the things that I put up so far. There's tons more coming, too, so stay tuned. But, uh, I, I uh, we've got the orientation from me Ireland, which was also a, kind of a mini podcast because they talk about the the news and what's going on in the world of Amiga. Um, I have a chat with Pixel Vixen. Uh, she's a uh, deep paint artist who does tutorials and stuff on YouTube, and also the winner of the Amiga Trivia Challenge. Uh, speaking of the Amiga Trivia Challenge, it is presented here in full um, uh, with uh, two rounds with the winners and everything, and uh, it was a lot of fun. People, um, you know, I was talking to Pixels about it, and he. Uh, I made the questions easier than they were originally presented, but people still had trouble with them. So Yeah, I will say, I, I listened to this. I watched this live, and I, no one will ever know, but I did exceedingly well at these questions. I just want to let you, you know. Next year, when I was you're in Ireland, you'll take home the crowd. I was surprised. I thought I would, I would just get murdered, and I knew most of them, so I felt pretty good about myself. Um, I've also put up uh, the Retro Hours. Oh, no, baby. Yeah, I put that up yesterday. The Retro Hour did a show live from me, Ireland. I put that up. You got to meet Dan. And Robbie, I, I know Robbie. Yeah, obviously, I, I ate lunch with Dan on Saturday. He's a real, real nice guy. Oh yeah, he's got a good voice. Yeah, he, huh? absolutely. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, and there's a lot more. I still haven't put up the mod competition. That was a whole lot of fun. Uh, watching the trackers and everything. Yeah, and, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, I, so I can't see that. One. Much more to come from Amiga Ireland footage. Uh, but uh, and enjoy what's up there. Yeah. Uh, boop. That's it. All right. Well, let's move on Roll to this on, week's brother. game, which is Crazy Cars 3. It's crazy. So Crazy Cars 3 was uh, chosen for us by the Amigos Game Selection Committee uh, over on the Discord. Uh, this was, I believe, a Chris Folds pick. A uh, Chris Folds joint? Yeah. You know, um, when I heard this game announced, uh, I was not, I was uh, trepidatious because it's the third of something. And also, the name doesn't exactly instill confidence. Right out of the gate, I was like, oh boy, this sounds like it could be a dud. <laughs> so, uh, Crazy Cars 3, uh, released in 92 uh, on two discs. Now, we'll get to this later, but the Crazy Cars 3 had one player, okay? Uh, now, this was published by Titus, and this is one of those games where the developer isn't listed, so, but it's pretty much Understood. thought that it was developed in-house. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, guy that coded it was named Richard Hooper, and the artist on it was uh, an assistant coder or full-time coder, whatever, was Gene Michael Masson. Um, Titus is one of those outfits you don't think about much, but they did a lot of games uh, for the uh, Amiga. But the games, I looked over the games list, they did like uh, a ton of games for it, but, you know, listen to some of these titles, all right? Okay. Battlestorm. You ever heard of that? No. Blues Brothers. I think you yes, played that. Yes, played that. What would you think of that one? Terrible. Yeah. And what about the second one? They did that one, too. Did not play the second one. Uh, Brainies. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, that Dick bell. Tracy. Okay. You, I, I didn't think that was very good. I, thought, I don't know. I only played the NES version. F40, which I haven't played, but Prehistoric I have played. Remember, we, I think that we I played think we did that, that on, on Amiga-thon. Amiga-thon. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. And then Titan. So I'd say of all these games, 
Uh, prehistoric would be my favorite. Now, uh, so when I looked at what they'd done and who was doing this, that didn't instill me with confidence either when I played this game. I was like, oh boy, I don't know about this. Um, so anyway, this this game had a lot of ports, which was surprising to me. Now get this boat. Uh, they had an Amstrad port. There was an Atari ST port. I, no one knows for sure which system this originated on. My guess is probably the it was either the ST or the Amiga, I would say. Um, the C64 and DOS also got ports of this, which is, I thought was kind of interesting. DOS. Uh, and I looked for it. I couldn't find it because I was going to give it a shot. And this is on a bunch of compilations. Uh, of course, this is Crazy Cars 3. I looked at Crazy Cars 1 and 2. Did you have a look at those at all? No, but I've heard they're, they're much, much worse than this. They're game. not good. Uh, they're not good. And that didn't instill confidence with me either because I'd played Crazy Cars. I didn't like it. I never played Crazy Cars 2, but I looked at it. So what do you do in Crazy Cars? Now, this game... <laughs> I want to just read this. I, I got this. For, I'm going to read this verbatim from the manual <laughs> because after playing the game, you would never have gotten this. Now, now are you going to talk about later what this game was later released? Yes, as? I am. I'll get to that. So, now listen to this. This is just a short blurb here. Saturday night races. Oh, whoop, wrong one. Hold that thought. See what you think. Uh, let me find this here. Of course, that's the one thing I didn't find. So, basically, what this says is, your guy wants to come over here. Here it is. Okay. You've just arrived in the United States with your heart set on becoming a millionaire. It's every immigrant's dream. Right? As, your, as your only skill, this is your only skill, advanced race car training. Yes. You decide to enter the Saturday Night Races tournament of illegal challenges. Okay. Hey. At, now, wait. Better start breaking the law right Now, hold on away. a second. As chance would have it, now this is lucky break here. As chance would have it, you're running an old friend down on his luck. Mm. In order to recoup some of his lost wealth, he sell you. He sells you his prized Lamborghini Diablo <laughs> at a rock bottom price. Now I can tell you that when my when my ancestors came over from the old world, this was almost exactly what happened to us. This next line's great. This uses up all but a few thousand dollars of your life saving. <laughs> this poor guy. He's got just enough money to buy one of the world's most expensive cars and still have several thousand dollars left over. <laughs> it seems like He's maybe, not going to make it in the States. Maybe like, maybe entering the world of illegal car racing is, is not something he should have done with all this money. Yeah. So, when I read that, I was just... <laughs> I thought, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. So, but that is a good setup for this game. So, you come into the game, you get to pick between three different people. You can play as Joe, Sly, or Val. Okay. Uh, and I don't think it matters. And then so you 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 uh, start the game. Now you can in the, the menu you can choose training or you can or you just play the game mm -hmm. championship. That's what it's called. So you are then shown a map of the U.S. and there are different spots on the map, and each one of these spots are different illegal Saturday night street race that yeah. you go on in your Lamborghini Diablo. Can you imagine, would you take that thing on an American street anywhere? So, in, in, the, in these races, you've got like, you know, like a 1972 Ford Escort, you know, a 1981 Chevy Citation, and, a, you know, a 1992 Lamborghini Diablo. You know, can you imagine, I can see why West Virginia didn't have, get a, a place on the map, because we don't have a road that you could drive one of these things down before you bottomed right. it out. So, once you, and you've got a certain set of money. You, uh, 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 you know, it's not a set of money. It's, a, it's an amount of money. A lot money. of money is what you're making. Yeah, about. thousands of dollars. Yeah. And so you pick a race that you could afford because there's an entry fee. Okay, so once you pick your race, and I believe the first one I tried was like Denver uh, was, or was a cheap one. There was another one. And then once you do that, then you go to the betting screen. Mm, yes. Not every race has the betting screen, but if there's a lot of big players, at the, there are races in this that are just nameless locals. I was going to say, did you run into races where there wasn't a betting screen? There is. Okay. And that's because there were no known named racers mm. in that area. Then you, there are other areas where you only have one or two named racers. But the first place I go always has all, it's like three named racers in you. And you all bet on winning. Okay. You, and you, you put your money down. And then they'll... Once you all bet, then some people, so there's always a jerk. It's like, I'm going to raise the bet. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. by the time this thing's, these, if you play along, well, you're in for a, a, you don't have to raise your bet, but you look like a wimp. That's right. And then you start the race. So you've bet, on, th on top of the winnings, you've got, you can win this money if you win the race, okay? And then you're off. So uh, each of these different areas have a different uh, geographical 
uh, screen set up. Uh, like if you're if you're in the mountains, you're in the mountains. There's some that are in the meadows. There's some that's in the cities. There's desert. There's uh, also, uh, to their credit, there's weather effects, which I thought was surprising. And so you take off, and the, and the best way to describe this game is sort of like, uh, it reminded me a little bit of like uh, like a Lotus 3, maybe. Remember we always thought Lotus 2 looked better than the third one? And this one sort of looked like is a step down from the third yeah, one. Yeah, I would put this more in the Jaguar H. It is somewhere in between yeah. those two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would, I would agree with you on that. And so you take off. Now, you get choices as to how you want your car to go. You can... You can, you can, and I did enjoy this. I was happy that they had, you can use the button or going up, which I always use the button. Yeah. And you can, you can sort of shift your car or you can automatically shift your car. You know, that's one of the things that we just don't get in America is up for acceleration. You know, we never, we never got it. Well, there are some games where I can do it, but if I have the choice, I'd really just have a button to do it. Because also, I don't want to hold up. It hurts my hand. Mm -hmm. And then you take off and you're in a race. It's your standard racing style game uh, where you are, the view is from behind the car. And you're going through traffic, and then you're also passing other racers. Uh, you you have to try to get number one. The racetracks are they're not laps; it's just like one long track. And uh, you and you, there's a position uh, bar at the top tells you where you're at. Which is odd because we just played a game without laps. It, last uh, week, I, I, we I was just thinking that myself. Yeah. It is really strange. <clears throat> um, there's not a whole lot to the controls of this. Like I said, it's clearly a joystick and button. There are a couple keyboard controls. Um, if you hit return, uh, you will... Or actually, I, I thought it was space bar, but the instructions to return. Anyway, you'll get your turn. On mine, I hit the space bar and I got the I boost. don't know what version you were playing, but it's enter. Was it? Okay. Uh, and um, you also... Now, I never did this because I didn't know about it until I printed out some of the docs. If you hit in, you turn on your night vision glasses. Did you ever try that? No, I you know I saw that in the manual. Yeah, and I immediately I, forgot about it. Yeah, I saw that's where I saw it. I didn't know you could do that. Uh, anyway, on the main screen is a thing that lists how much boost you've got, which is turbo boost and score, how much damage your car's got. There's a if you bought it, there's a radar detector. There's some stuff you can buy, some add-ons yeah. that will show up in well, that here, screen. Uh, no, know, go ahead. You know the thing about the shop is. Like the radar detector is like fifteen hundred bucks. Everything really else is expensive. nine gazillion dollars. Yeah. So I was never able to be good enough to really spend a lot of time. In well, school. I cheated, mm. and so I got I, I played I played dumb guy style. Then I played <coughs> millionaire Lamborghini owner style. You know, or whatever the, the guy <laughs> yeah. that comes over. If from, you're just throwing down thousands, then you, you know, get right in. <laughs> um, so you're on the road. You're racing these guys. Um, the uh, it's I would say it's a. I found the racing to be pr- pretty good, pretty smooth. It is not as good as Lotus 2, which is the benchmark. Mm-hmm. But again, it's a firm, it's somewhere in the ballpark of, like I said, it's a step down from the third one and a step up from Lamborghini in terms of the way it scrolls. I found it to be a pretty smooth scroll. Now, one thing I want to say right away, and I, I mentioned this on Discord straight away, I was terrible at this game. Terrible. And I could not figure out how anyone could win. Well, then I played the emulated version, mm. and I was like, "Oh, this is one of those games. That if you play it on an NTSC Amiga, it's like uh, Warp Lightning Factor fast, 10. Yeah. It was so quick I couldn't do anything because right. I would play on the. I went back and played it on Amiga Forever, and mm-hmm. would, I was winning races yeah. left and right like a stud. That's another reason why about that you know that garbage 500 that we have. I just couldn't do anything uh, with. We well, just stop calling it that. <laughs> but. Uh, um, so this is one that you need, and I could not find an NTSC version, so that doesn't mean there isn't one, but I didn't have it. Uh, so I had to play this. I actually played it a lot on the Amiga just to see if I could somehow get good enough to win. No. no. But I, I could just finish the top five or six on that, but I mean, it was a lot more running off the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is also like Lotus in the fact that when you run off the road or you run into something, your car just sort of hops up yeah. in the air. And I enjoy that. I don't like pole position style games where your car is immediately destroyed and you got to wait. Well, I, to I, I don't mind the outrun at version where you just sort of flip over and it's sort of hilarious but in a game like this the one thing about this game is when you um when you have a problem like or get caught behind something where i mean you lose a lot of positions mm-hmm. i thought i found the computer to be a formidable po- uh, opponent yeah now could i win a race sure and i i, I did pretty well uh, uh, all things considered but uh, there was plenty of races where I would run off the road and and get slowed down, or somebody just would, you know, every once in a while a couple cars get in front of you and you just can't get around them, and you, you know, they'll they'll smoke you. And there's no catching them a lot of times. Mm-hmm. They're gone. It's right. late in the race. Uh, there's a distance bar at the top that runs from right to left, and as it goes down, that means you're coming closer to the end of the race. Mm-hmm. 
And then when you get real close to the end, uh, 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 numbers will pop up on the screen and start rolling down real quick how many meters like it is of what you're from the finish line, uh, which I, I thought that was a good way to do it. Uh, what did you think about the overall racing gameplay? You know, I thought the racing was okay. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I played Jaguar HJ, XJ220, um, and I would put that in this pretty neck and neck. Um, I think there are some things that the Jaguar does a little bit better. I, I thought that the, the turning, you know, even when I was doing well, I still found it to be a little bit squirrely. Um, it's nowhere close to Lotus 2. I mean, Lotus 2 is still the gold standard for control. It, it controls the way I think it should control. Uh, however, um, I really enjoyed the fact that you know you just you always keep going. You never stop in this game, and mm -hmm. that that made that that forgave a lot of the ills. Um, I thought that the way that they they did the racing, where it's a it's a race with tons of cars, but you have rivals within each race that you're trying to beat to win the bet. I thought that was a cool angle, and that wasn't something that I'd seen before. It it that part of it was like, I've noticed that the rivals. Are, 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 are always near the front when yeah. you have named rivals, mm -hmm. uh, and so they're they're not the easiest. I mean, it's a challenge. Like I said, uh, of course you uh, you can uh, you could augment your car if you get the money uh, with uh, better tires, uh, better engine, yeah. more that's, boost. That's my big complaint about this game is that even after winning five or six races. Um, I still didn't have enough money to buy item one in the store other than the radar detector, which I found was useless because I never once got stopped by the police. Well, the police, did, but you did encounter them. I encountered them, but I just boosted right on by them. I liked, I thought, the, that's something else that I will say was a hassle, was using the boost. This mm -hmm. is the same old story. Now, yeah. this game did, believe it or not, it, this game had a, uh, uh, you can play this game or, or a facsimile of this game on the CD32, which I didn't try, and I wondered if they had put that boost on the stick. That would have helped, because this is yeah. another game where you have to let go of the, you have to hit the button. And that's, Very inconvenient. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's the limitation of the, of, of the system. Uh, but you could get tires. I'm looking here, so it looks like the reason we didn't get the night vision, it's something you get in Division 1, which I didn't get that oh, far. Yeah. Uh, and I never got to the point where I really needed night vision. Uh, but you as, you, as you go through the game, you, you earn money. And when you get enough money, you can go for, like, the divisional challenge. Did you ever try the divisional challenge? I never made enough money. Okay, I did. Work. And the divisional challenge is you're on a road and there's a time limit. You have to finish the that stretch of road in this certain amount of time. And when you do, you get to graduate to the next division. Mm -hmm. Okay? And But the gimmick is that you're not racing on this thing. Yet you're racing at the clock, but the, the, uh, the road is full of semi-trucks. And you've got to kind of dodge around. Uh, I never actually got past the first division. I can I can never. I, I mean, I came literally within seconds of getting there, but I, I on my best run. Uh, but even with a jacked up car, it was pretty difficult. I mean, but I mean, this is a game. I'm pretty sure I could get better at if I got to play it a lot longer. I mean, and I will say this. And I, Lotus Two again, gold standard. But this is amongst the top tier racing games oh, sure. on the on the machine and i'll say that uh knowing that there are a lot of good ones and you know i thought that the the color palette was very interesting in this game yeah it's it's sort of a uh sort of a uh burnt orange uh you know different different shades kind of a muted color palette uh which is 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 not always my first choice but i thought suited this game really well that sort of post-apocalyptic seem post-apocalyptic even though i guess it's not really but everybody dresses crazy um, I thought that one of the cool things about it was that they gave your opponents sort of, in, not really a personality, but they showed your opponents, you know, Al Capone or whatever. Yeah. That was cool. And um, the opponents are wacky. There was yeah. some real wacky ones. Yeah. yeah. So it's, real, it's a real colorful game in, in lots of senses. Well, I like I like the betting system. <coughs> I thought that was fun. Uh, I like, I mean, it's an, it's really, it, it, I like games that tack stuff on that really don't affect the game. I mean, the game engine doesn't change. It's just something fun. Mm hmm you know that, I, and I like that to it. And what it reminded me of was the tournament mode of One Must Fall. It's a very similar thing where you and they give and sometimes the guys all show up that you know just crazy guys. And then you know there's there the picture, but it's still fun. Yeah, it gives the game some personality. That's right. I'm like you. I thought there was a lot of varied tracks. I thought they were interesting. There's tunnels and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. they, it's like that part of it's very yeah. Lotus like. And I, I enjoyed the fact that there weren't laps. I mean, you, you I'm see the everything same way. the track has to offer, and then you're done. I don't want to go back. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I don't have. I don't. I kind of. And that's something that's real unusual. I mean, I, it's weird that we had two of these because I can't think of too many games that do it like that. You know, mm -hmm. I, and I kind of like it to be honest with you. Again, it's a, a out an outrun style thing where you go through one thing. You know, once. Right. 
the, the choices are great. I didn't get to see every track, but I saw a good chunk of them, and it was fun. I like fun. the way that they present you with choices at the beginning, I too. love it. Yeah. I love it. And it's, some of it's sort of pseudo-choices until you earn the money, but still, it's, it's, I like that. I thought that was really cool. And it gives you um, it gives you a plan. Like, you're like, okay, well, I can race here and here, but then once I do these two races, I'll have enough money to go here. And you know that you know if you go to one of the more northern places, it's going to be snow or something like that. So... Um, I'm always a fan of any time there's a, a game gives you choice from the get-go on what you want to do. Yeah, I'm, I agree with that. Plus, you can finish dead last in some of these events, and if you've got the money, you're not going to be boned. You're, until you're broke, flat broke, mm -hmm. you've got options. Right. So, that, Which is nice. Now, uh, I want to touch on the police that show up. Now, every once in a while, you will see a cop either waiting on you or coming up on you, okay? Which is cool. I love that aspect, mm -hmm. too. Kind of like test drive, right? That's right. I've got mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um, and of course, they want to get you. So sometimes the, the, the cops actually will run like a speed trap, and then sometimes they'll come after you. So what's neat is, and, it, and the docs say that sometimes you'll go past the point and they'll have cam radar cameras. I don't Who knows? I don't, I don't remember seeing yeah. one. So in the, when the police are on you, uh, they're, they're on you. And so you could actually stop. And when the cops pull you over and it ends the race, and you'll have to pay money. They can also catch you or disable your car, and then you have to go to jail and you have to pay money. Or you can just blow past them. Mm -hmm. That's when the boost really kicks in, is and just you blow cops and blow the doors off those guys if you've right. got boost. But of course, boost costs money, and sometimes mm -hmm. you don't. Sometimes you don't have any, you know. So, but you I, get one to start with, and I can never afford another one because I guess it was fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, well, you boost. you got to have that. You got to make that big money. Uh, so <laughs> that that's the way it goes. Um, just while we're on the subject, before I move on to the sort of the next game, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Titus. We talked about it earlier now because they're they're a French company. They were anyway. I don't know how much you remember about these guys, but actually this was one of their bigger games. I put out a list of all the games they did just to see what they did. They ended up going bankrupt, uh, uh, and I think it was two thousand five. Uh, so they went belly up, and which is which is a shame because they were actually around for quite a while. And they did a ton of games for the Game Boy. They did games on the, all the big consoles. I mean, they were around for a while, uh, including uh, games that I've heard of. Uh, they actually published a ton of stuff too, and that didn't develop, including stuff like Worms. You know, they and I remember Xeno on the C sixty or on the N sixty four. But one of the games they did, and this probably didn't do them any favors. They were the they were the outfit responsible for the N sixty four. The uh, uh, notorious N64 Superman, if you'll recall that, if you don't, if you know anything about bad games, that's one of the classics. It's considered one of the all-time worst games, right, right. and so so they, their track record spotty is spotty at best. They also did Jimmy White's Cue Ball World. Hey, Ooh. you got that going for yeah. you. I noticed. So one of the games they did, and and this, I don't know how you stumbled upon this. Something did you, when you, the American Lamborghini Challenge? How did you come across this information? Did you uh, just from just from when I went to stream this game? Yeah. Uh, it didn't show up. YouTube lets you choose what game you, they, they, they categorize it in. Right. You can type it in and auto completes. When I typed in Crazy Cards, Lamborghini Challenge popped up. Right. So that's the funny thing about this game. So what does this game not have that um, Lotus has? What well, Lotus has multiplayer, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so uh, this didn't, but they wanted it, I guess, or they were working on it, or they decided to add it. And so what you've got then was the American Lamborghini Challenge game, which was a separate release, uh, and it was released, I guess, as a as a new game. Uh, but it, and I played it. Did you actually play it at no, all? I played, played it. it, and it is it is exactly the same as this, as far as I can tell, with, with the exception of a two player option. I will say the Lamborghini American Challenge is a much better name than Crazy Cars Three. It it it, 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 it yeah, and so. Uh, the difference is, like I said, you can play two player. Now, I did not get to play two players, but I played one player extensively, and it's—I mean, I could not tell any difference. It played exactly like of Courage of Cars Three. Uh, I did read some stuff on the on the uh, multiplayer, and the multiplayer—it sounds like it had some issues. Mm. I heard that if if one player is lagging way behind, the only the uh, the other player can only go to like the fifth place. They can actually advance in the race because the other guy's so far behind. So there is some sort of rubber banding going on. Well, yeah, but that's with the that's with the uh, um, two player version. You're literally rubber banding with the other player. Right. right. Horrible. Yeah. That's that's horrible. <laughs> uh, something else I read is that uh, there's some uh, discrepancies with how money is spent in the shop between one player and the other. Mm. Also, some people will report that one one player that was easier than the second player. Maybe one was harder. Really? Or that's ran smoother. So that. 
it had some issues. Mm-hmm. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but it did, you know, it got released on some stuff, and I believe there's even a Super Nintendo version of it. Now, what I found interesting, and I'm going to try this as soon as I can, they actually made a sequel to that, and it was on the N64. It was only released in Europe or Japan. It wasn't released in the States, uh, but it was called Automobile Lamborghini, mm. and it was supposed to be, the, it was the, so technically, if you look at it the right way, there is a sequel to this on the N64. Automobile Lamborghini. You're going to have to check that out on the EverDrive. I will. I will. I don't know if I've got it, but I'll, if I don't, I'll, I'll locate it. Uh, but it's. I like the idea that they added two players to this, but it is kind of a bummer that they didn't really iron it out, yeah. uh, as, as it were. Yeah. Uh, again, they also released a, C60, or a, a CD32 version of this. Everything I read said there were... Like, I thought, hey, maybe it's AGA, or but everything I read, and someone can hold me up and tell me I'm wrong if, it's, if I am, I, that there was no change in it at all. Like, they didn't AGA it up, or they just basically surprise, dumped it over. Surprise. I know. I know you love to rag on the CD32 boat, but and they were, hey, it wasn't out that long. People were just trying to get in and get out without spending a bunch of cash, boat. That's the way it is. These guys, they were, their hands were tied. They were tied. tied. So, uh, where do I place this in my pantheon of racing games? I would put this as we. I, I, I like uh, I like Lotus Two the best. I think Lotus Three is second best. Then this. Then your uh, what was the other one you said the uh, 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 Jaguar the Jaguar game, which is the, I think this gets a better racing engine than Jag mm-hmm. uh, myself. And I'm, I'm guessing you probably feel about the same way I yeah. do on that. Yeah. Um, you got anything to add? Nope. Okay, I looked this up. On eBay, this thing is really tough to find. Uh, I was surprised. I only saw one currently listed on eBay, and it was in Italy, and it was twenty-two uh, bucks. Now, some had sold recently in Germany and the UK, and they were going cheap. You know, fifteen, ten, eight. You know, something like that. They weren't expensive. These are complete in box copies. Yeah. Um, just the magazine reviews of this, and I know you've got your side of that. Um, Lemon gave uh, this game 7.98, a good score. They also, now just for fun, I looked up to see what the Lamborghini American Challenge was getting. 7.84, so slightly lower, mm-hmm. but you know how that goes. And the CD32 version, though, it's 7.45. That's a disappointment. Uh, Amiga Action gave it an 89%, Amiga Computing an 85%, Amiga Format a 93 Amiga Power 88 and the one gave it a 90 So those are pretty good scores. I mean, your B plus scores. I don't know if I'd go that high, I, but I mean, I think it's a solid B title. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, this is another one of those crazy ones. It does look, I mean, it's when you look at the characters in it, it almost does feel like they were going for some kind of like post-modern or post I know. It, yeah, it's like they wanted to make a post-apocalyptic game, but they didn't actually put anything in it other than the color scheme. Yeah, and also just the fact that the, the guys look, I and mean, even the guys you can pick from, they look—they don't look like just normal racing no, guys. No. Like when you play Need for Speed or something, yeah. they look like racing right. guys. These guys all have stories to tell. You know, so these guys look more like uh, post-apocalyptic. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, uh, do I recommend it? Yes. Was it fun? Yes. Would I play it again? Yes. <laughs> Very good. Let's see what our uh, Discord community had to mm. say. These are user reviews from our our Discord community. All of the fine folks that support us on Patreon. Uh, Graham Vebke says, uh, once you get over its part of the Crazy Car series, it's actually a very capable racing game, mm-hmm. which is up there with the likes of Lotus 2 and Jaguar XJ220. The game plays well, has su- smooth autumn tone graphics. I like that. Autumn tone. Autumn tone. Man, he should write for like a, uh, a catalog. I know. Uh, animation and introduces some in game mechanics still used by driving games today. Chris Fold says, Crazy Cars 3 is an often overlooked Amiga classic. Rivals Lotus 2 and XJ220 in all areas and has numerous in- invocative features. I'm not sure if you meant innovative there or invocative. Uh, Paul Harrington says Crazy Cars 3 was probably one of the few Amiga games I completed without cheats or a trainer. I believe him. A challenging and addictive game with cops, division challenges, and a cool jet engine turbo. 9 out of 10. Duncan Styles writes, My Crazy Car 3 thoughts, well, only the sluggish controls and collisions seeking rival cars let down a great racing game. Looks great, fast, and with features that elevate it above the average racer. 8 out of 10. Want to take the next couple, Aaron? Yes, and then I've got one thing to add that I forgot. Matthew Perron, a great overlooked racing game with an awesome sense of speed and beautiful scenery. There's a lot of races, and being able to wager on some of them adds to the excitement. 
eight boing balls out of ten boing balls because of the lack of in-game music, and that just nailed it. Yeah. This yeah. game has some menu music, but there is no in-game tunes. It's a, it's that a, is a killer. It's the it's Lotus a, Disease. It's the, I can't believe it took me this long to remember it. Thank yeah. you, man. That is a ridiculous oversight. Mm-hmm. Inexcusable. That Absolutely. takes it down a notch. Because when you're racing, you want... You don't want nothing. You know, I want sound effects want plus the music. Yeah. That's a fail on that. Mm-hmm. It's inexcusable. Bark bit. A fast-paced, fun racer in the style of Lotus, only hampered by the sluggish handling of the stock car. Careful choosing of races and upgrades are key to success. 7 out of 10, I agree. Pixels at Dawn. A high-quality racer on the Amiga with an interesting championship mode. Doesn't beat Lotus for gameplay, but is streaks ahead of its predecessors. Let down by a lack of multiplayer until it was re-released as a Lamborghini American Challenge. Yes, I agree. Uh... Chicote, is that the way you pronounce it? I never, I always, I've read his name and I never actually said it. Uh, a racer that was fun and entertaining but needs more gears to save me from that high pitch whine. Another reason to have good music. Right. What I learned, I should neither gamble nor race for a living. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, but not least, the level lord. Mm. If anyone's going to know, he's the lord of all levels. Never played Crazy Cars 3 before, but I like both the graphics and music. Which were just above the ordinary. That's what we're going for here. Playability, playability is okay. While S, uh, special effects, sound effects being a horrible mess. What did I say? Special effects. Thank you. Screeching sound, which represents the hump, bu- the burning tires. That's true. Made my ears bleed. And any collision with the scenery caused the car to jump as high as a mad goat dashing in the air. A mad goat. <laughs> I should play. I should play more before revealing my opinion. But I expect. More from the game, uh, but I expect more from a game made in 1992. Yeah. All valid points, and I agree with pretty much all those. Yeah, so thank you guys for submitting your uh, reviews over on our, our Discord channel. Aaron, last week, the Patreon song. It was two weeks ago. Yeah, because last week, we just me and Brent just sort of talked about the Patreon. I heard it. I heard it. I, I know you. I, you, you were you love you were so happy. I was, I was expecting you to sing. I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear. You know. I was hoping you and Aaron would do a maybe a maybe a meatloaf paradise by the dashboard light duet. He would have been the, the woman. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you that right now. <laughs> um, but uh, two weeks ago, it was actually a two in one uh, song. I started out with "When Irish Eyes Are Smiling." Yeah. And then I ended up with. It's funny here because I put ODB. And uh, that and it's that's uh, that's a rapper. I know I know who that is. <laughs> so that that tickles me that I read that now. You know, um, I'm, I'm sorry, so no one accosted you with a shillelagh so, upon your entry to the country. No, okay. no, old Danny Boy was oh, the yeah. Uh, yeah. I, uh, uh, Paul Harrington, uh, a Northern Irish native, uh, Edvin Helen, Daring Coles, and Tech Cowboy. Ooh, I'll get that right. The Tech, Tech Cowboy. Cowboy, like a Star Spangled Rodeo. Yeah. Um. So uh, this week. If you know this week's uh, Patreon song challenge, please send me an email at john at amigospodcast.com. So here we go. Counting virtual sheep, Bernard Quinn, Retro Man Cave, Tim Drew, Dan Will Williams, Robert Edgerton, Simon Rose, Joseph Harrison, Kyle Letter, Rob O'Hara, Howard Nibs, Matthew Aramore. Andy Craig, Sean's O'Darren, Lomax, Colin419, Bockbit, Roland Burke, Andrew Monks, Joe the Zombie, and John Cook, Dan Ross, Leaf, Kellon, Alan Cabal, Tickle Day, Level Lord, John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRosa, Creepy Dead Boy. Figgy CTZ, the slow Norris, step on Swagard Mortensen, Evan Helen, Blendo 75, Christopher Hassel, Ravi Abbott, Chris Foles, Dreamcatcher, Lauren Giroux, Graham Vecchi, Bryn Dowd, Elaine Denson, Adam Matters B. O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Gary Hawker, C. Brian Jones, Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles, Alan Kebab, Anthony Jarvis, Tapes from the Crib, Josh Nan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rouleau, T. 
THT, Eric Nelson, Kim Tommy Homestad, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warns, Pixels at Dawn, Kjolbjorn Barman. I got no idea. That list gets any longer, you got to do a small opera every week. Oh boy, you'd love that. Oh man, I'm out of here if that <laughs> happens. All right, Aaron, next week on Amigos, we are going to be taking a look at a sports title. It's been a while since we've done a sports game. I can't remember the last time. Yeah. We're going to take a look at Advantage Tennis. Oh yeah, boy, tennis. for us by our lovely Patreon community, the uh, Amigos Game Selection Committee. I want to thank all the fine folks in the chat right now that have come to listen to us live. I want to pity them after hearing that. Pixels at Dawn, Henrik Anderson, Edvin Helen, Martin B., Neville Overman, uh, Necronom, Anthony Jarvis. Uh, maybe that's it this week. There's tons of people in the chat. If you are in the chat, you need to make yourself known. So, uh, thank you so much. We record the show every week on Friday. Sometimes we start a little earlier, like today. Sometimes we, most of the time, we start around 5:30 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. So, uh, we'd love to have you around. Uh, thank you guys for listening, and we will see you next week. Until then. Adios. Adios.